we're going to call this uh, January 12th meeting of the Public Works Committee to order. Um, we have our general agenda and our consent agenda uh, to uh, committee members that are present. Are there any items on consent with the full? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I've been moving properly. Second. Any questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, likewise. That's unanimous. We'll move forward to the general agenda, starting with item G1. Item G1, report on general obligation bond construction projects. Good evening, Vice Chairman Montgomery, members of the City Council. Uh, November 2014, City voters approved a $139.2 million uh, bond package that covered five areas, economic development, housing, public safety facilities, recreation and parks, and streets and sidewalks. Uh, over the last several months, uh, design work on a number of these projects has been completed and we've actually moved into the construction phase. Uh, the mayor and the city council have approved a number of uh, construction contracts and uh, at the Public Works uh, Committee's request, staff has prepared a, uh, an update on uh, select bond projects. These are projects that are projected to be under construction by June. Um, and what we're going to share with you this evening are mainly the projects that are managed by the engineering division. So we will not talk about the economic development bonds or the housing bonds or uh, projects that are managed by Parks and Recreation and City DOT. Uh, after we give you the, the individual project updates, then I'm going to talk a little bit about an update that our marketing department is providing to the community. Just some uh, efforts that we're making. This is actually a suggestion of the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee that maybe we give the, the uh, community an, an update on, on where we stand with a lot of the projects. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Mr. Presswood is going to go through these projects and really give you uh, some basic information about each, basically what the current status of the projects uh, are, the um, projected completion date if that information is available, the budget, uh, how much funding has been committed to the projects, so both spent and encumbered, and then finally, what the current NWB commitment is for those projects. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Presswood. Would you prefer us to hold our questions until after or to ask them as we go through the presentation? Please step in when, when you'd like to ask any questions. Okay. Good evening, council members. Good evening. Um, we'll go ahead and move into the public safety, uh, which includes the police district stations and the fire stations. Um, First one to update is police district facility number one, which is located on North Point Boulevard. Uh, we have just recently opened bids for this. Uh, we combined district one and district three since they were almost um, exact copies of each other into one contract to try to achieve some savings on that. Um, Finance committee approved that last night, so it will be coming to council on Monday. I'm assuming it's approved then. Uh, we mark the projected completion date is March 2017 on those two buildings. They will be built simultaneously. Yeah, we have the, the last night, did we have the contracts on the construction? No. That was in consent. That's in correct. Way. Okay, that's correct. No, they were not full. Yeah. Um, project budget on that was 3.2 million. Uh, funds committed is a little over 3 million with uh, over 500,000 of that committed to MWBEs. Move on to police district number two, which is currently under construction, uh, located on Walltown. Uh, the project completion date right now is the end of March of uh, this year. Uh, they've had some weather delays the past couple weeks, so we may have to add a couple weeks as far as getting the parking lot and that done to it, um, but it shouldn't be far off that March date. Project budget was a little over 2 million, with 1.9 of that committed, and 625,000 of that committed to MWBs. Police District 3 on Winter Haven Lane um, off of Stratford Road. Again, that's that combined contract with District 1. So it's on the same time timeline, assuming it's approved next Monday. We're looking at a projected completion date of March 2017. Project budget on that was 3.6 million, almost 3 million total funds committed so far, with 586,000 of that being to MWBEs. And, uh, Spritz, uh, what's the difference in cost there? I mean, if they're are they identical buildings, but there's a there were some very slight differences in the district one because um, there's some soil conditions out there that we had to do some vapor barriers on on the flooring on that. 
Um, right, district, district one is 400,000 less than District three. The price, the big thing was the price of the land. Okay, so that was that was inclusive land out there on Stratford. Yeah. Fire station number seven on Arbor Road. We're wrapping up the design uh, right now, so uh, plan on going to bid in February uh, with the uh, projected contract award at your March meetings. Um, the uh, completion date on that's to be determined because it'll be based on when it is awarded. Project budget on that is $2 million. Obviously, uh, we have not awarded the construction contract, so the uh, architect fees is that 195000 with 44,000 of that being committed to MWBEs. Would you please let them know, I would like to see whatever we come up with revised. Yes, sir, as far as the parking is concerned. Yeah, parking yes. I'd love to get rid of those cardboard dumpsters, but I, I have I have yet to find a place to put them myself. I've been thinking about it. Will they fit in your driveway? <laughs> I have four of them there, and they're always full, and they're dumped almost daily. Yeah. <laughs> Back to facility three, please. Um, uh, has the contract been awarded yet? It was approved at the Finance Committee last night, and so we'll be coming to Council on Monday. Of course. Uh, do you have a projected ground bay? Um, obviously, if, if it's approved on Monday, we'll, Assuming we'll, it's approved. We'll, we'll get with marketing, and usually they're scheduling those two to three weeks after uh, Council of February. Thank you. Please go ahead. Fire station number eight. Uh, the replacement located on uh, Rinalda Road. Um, all our contracts are in place. The PO has been issued. Uh, it says under construction where they were just the contractor needs to move out there and start work. Um, again, the cold weather the past couple weeks, uh, it's hard to uh, grade when the ground's frozen, so uh, they should be moving out any time. Have they moved the house? We're going to be de demoing, the house. demoing the house. That's correct. Project budget on that was two and a half million. Total funds committed is right at two million with 340,000 of that to MWBEs. Are all the fire station projects done with um, design build contracts or are they? Yeah, we, no. we have followed the traditional bid method on all our bond projects. Okay, thanks. Fire station number nine on Ogburn Avenue. Um, We'll be doing fire station seven and nine, similar to how we did district one and three. The same architect is designing it, so it will be one contract combining those two, uh, hoping to su achieve some cost savings. So it's following the same schedule as, as number seven with a uh, projected contract award in March. Total project budget's a little over 400,000 for that uh, with total funds committed right at 50,000 and 9,000 MWB committed. <coughs> Alexander Bainey Public Safety Training and Support Center. Council awarded that contract in December. Um, I was informed we just got the contract back today from the contractor, so we will be writing the contract for signatures um, and then issuing the PO. Um, so that puts us at a projected completion date on that in January of 2017. Project budget on that was seven million. Total funds committed is 5.2 million with 500 of that MWPE. There still is some significant uh, furniture and finishings and equipment that has to be purchased to go in that facility, so that's why we're under budget right there. Question, um, Lee, on this item, once this portion is completed, how does this, this work in tandem correct with the um, additional work that's going to take place within the Public Safety Center? And we, we're fin I think we've actually finished the design, most of the design on the Public Safety Center. Uh, we can't move forward and, and with the contract to renovate the public safety center until this building, the, this second phase of it, of the Beatty building is complete, as well as the three districts, because we'll be moving a significant, significant number of people out of the public safety center so we can renovate that building one half at a time. So, what, I don't know, what, about a year and a half before we'll start the public safety center? That's correct. Okay. <coughs> Okay, move on to parks and recreation projects. Um, first one we'll discuss is the Quarry Park development. Um, again, that was on the Finance Committee last night, um, and we'll be coming to full council uh, on Monday. Uh, assuming award then, the uh, projected completion date on that is April of 2017. 
the project budget, which includes the Walltown Connector Greenway, is $5 million. Uh, total funds committed is $4.97 with an MWBE commitment of $1.6 million. Salem Lake Marina. It is out for bid right now. We will be opening bids on the 22nd of January. Um, assuming no issues with the bids and that we get enough bidders, we plan on bringing it to council in February. Um, and then that would give us a projected completion date on that of September 2017. That one takes a little bit longer because uh, because we plan on keeping the park open and we'll be asking the contractor to complete the marina and the marina parking lot first before he moves over and disturbs the parking lot and builds the playground over at the point section. Have you been surprised at the fact we haven't gotten as many bids as we traditionally do? What we've seen is the traditional buildings, like the fire stations yes. and the police districts, we've gotten a very good response on those. These park projects, I think, may have be finding a contractor that can handle all the site work and the building work, mm -hmm. um, I think has posed some problems for contractors. Okay. And so that, that's why we may have a, a smaller turnout on some of those. Okay. Do you project a closure of the marina during uh, the construction phase? The plan right now is to keep it open and operating during construction. Now, there may be some short-term closures where it's just not possible, but we're, we're going to do everything we can to keep it operating during construction. And when you indicate that you plan to complete that area first before doing the point, um, how much of the parking area do you anticipate you would need to, do you have an idea how much you it's a fairly large section we'll be taking, and so that, that's why we'll be counting on some of the parking in the point to, right. to handle the, the overflow from the marina. And do you have a projection in terms of the months that that, uh, that work will be taking place? We have it in the contract. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I can find it for you. That'd be good. Thank you. Yeah, ideally, if that's winter, then Bless you, yeah. you've got fewer users, so fewer lower demand for the parking. I don't think I've gone through the project budget on that is $4 million. Uh, since it's not under contract, we've only committed $350,000 with two hundred of that to MWP. <coughs> Winston Lake Aquatic Facility. Um, we have open bids on that. They did come in um, over budget, so we are in the process of um, what's known as value engineering to try to get uh, the project under budget. We plan on having that for council in February for their consideration. And um, approve, assuming it's approved then, we're looking at a projected completion date of April 2017. Um, our goal is to have that open for the summer of 2017. Uh, total project budget of $4,500,000 of that is committed with 94000 of it going to MWBEs. Question? Yes, sir. Um, say that number again on the... On the budget. Yes, on the MWBE commitment at, at that number and just looking at the commitment that's there. And is that what's committed already, yeah, the that, MWBE? Or? That, that's what's committed through the architectural design contract. Okay. Uh, all right. we, we haven't done the construction contract. Okay. Yeah. In terms of the, the value engineering, engineering that's underway there, um, are there any major facilities that you would point to as being likely to need to be cut back to make budget? We're trying not to affect the facilities themselves. Uh, typically, we start looking at things that can be brought back later. There was a uh, north overflow parking lot in the original design that has been eliminated. Um, the parking lots are, are most likely going to be gravel, but set up that we can come back at a later date and pay them. Uh, try hard to look at items like that. And to that end, I'd like to be in, in, integrated in that conversation. Jameson Park. This one's similar to Fire Station 8. Uh, everything's in place. Uh, contractor is ready to move out there. The completion date on that is November of 2016. Project budget was $3 million. We've committed right at that $3 million on this project, with $650,000 of that committed to MWBEs. Okay. 
and the Sedge Garden Gym is on the same schedule as Fire Station 8 and Jameson. Um, so that puts the uh, projected completion date at November 2016 on that. Project budget was 1.3 million. Total committed is 1.25 with 265,000 going to MWBEs on that. Happy Hill Park renovations. This was a two-phase project. It needed a master plan and then it would move into construction documents. We are currently in the master plan phase of that. The, uh, the hired architect has had a couple community meetings to, to get input from the community about what they want to see out there. Um, they should be wrapping that master plan up shortly um, and assuming it's approved by council, we will then move into the design uh, or construction drawings phase on that. Total project budget for the construction is $5 million. The uh, funds committed is just the architect's fee so far, which is 174000 with 20,000 20, of that going to MWBs. Um, minor item, uh, do you anticipate a direct connection from the park to the Greenway? Yes. Okay. Yes. Then wouldn't expect that to cost much. And, and I think part of what they're looking at is maybe rerouting the existing greenway a little bit to, to make it more attractive and, and fit within the park a little better. Okay. Yeah, and actually, the, it would two pieces, actually. One, um, there is a uh, neighborhood association meeting on Saturday for that, and if I could possibly get some of the handouts they had at that last meeting for that, <coughs> but it'd be great, um, the Happy Hill Neighborhood Association. But they are looking at potentially getting the... Um, rounding it closer on the edge so that they can use some of that land a little bit better so that the area works better. But I think you'll be pleased to answer. Yeah, no, I just was thinking yeah. if to, yeah. we all take, be sure we take advantage of the opportunity to get a good connection mm -hmm. from the No, the I, th park. I think it'll be, I think it's a, mm -hmm. yeah. We went over that before you got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anything else? Haynes Park Improvement um, is a similar situation to Happy Hills. It's currently in the uh, master planning phase. Uh, they've had several community meetings on that also. And uh, once they uh, have a master plan for uh, council to consider, we'll then move into the uh, construction phase on that. Uh, total project budget is a million dollars. 123,000 has been committed with 18 to MWBs. Before you go ahead, I for all these park projects, both the two new ones, or the two ones we just got the master plans we're working on, Haynes Park and Happy Hill, but as well as the the, the, the previous ones, um, these are all, they will all be phase one. There will be, we'll have designs and pretty good concepts of the phase two if in the future we look at an additional bond referendum down the road. Can I just ask a question about the, on Haynes Park, the total funds committed, 123,000, is that spent so far in planning process? Yes, that's correct. It's, been, it's a total encumbered, and so we haven't paid that all out yet, but that's the, yeah, that, that represents what we're spending so far. Yeah. yeah. If I could comment too on Haynes Park, there are a number of grand old uh, steps and entrances to that park that are kind of overgrown, and, and in some of them we've disappeared. I can think of one right at the curb at West End where uh, Pilot View comes in with the top right corner of the picture. Uh, Obviously, there may be some fit, some builders of things, but just the grounds themselves could use a lot of TLC. Some of this a portion of it is in the National Register District, the Historic Overlay District, and so improvements there have got to um, adhere to those guidelines. They have to be rebuilt as they historically were, and an awful lot of what we're doing is going to be based around beautification and, and um, safety and sight lines and things. So that's really the, Cause the big be interest the right there where Clover comes in is yeah. quite nice. Right, and we've already gotten traffic calming in there, so we're making good progress on that. Lots, lots of community input on that one. Okay. <laughs> yep. I'm sure you have. Yeah. And of course, the, with the football stadium going in, will be very nice addition as well. Just gonna pick a fight though. <laughs> okay. You need to get everyone tonight, eh? On the road. We'll move on to uh, the streets and sidewalks, and the, the, these are the. Uh, Two of the projects actually fall under engineering. There's, there's obviously quite a few sidewalk projects that fall under DOT that I won't be addressing tonight. First one is Polo Road corridor improvements, which run from University to Indiana. We'll be putting in a new sidewalk from University to Cherry Street. 
and then uh, doing what's known as a road diet from Cherry to Indiana, which will allow us to put bike lanes in on that section. Um, that was on finance last night also, uh, so it will be going to full council on Monday. Uh, assuming approval, the, project, the completion date on that project is November of 2016. Total project budget of two million with right at 1.6 million um, committed and 327 of that is going to MWBDs. Robert, I know we didn't include uh, the metal arc widening because it won't go out to contract till late summer. Can you give a quick update to the committee? I know there's one member here. Who yes, I got to talk about it first. Yes. We're, we're currently well into the design process of that. Um, we, we've just uh, reviewed plans that, that were done by the consultant and have returned comments back to them. Uh, we probably will start reaching out to the community around February or March for property acquisition. Um, and looking at uh, hopefully letting the contract in August. Okay. Will we have anything visual we can show first? Yes, we have drawings. We don't have property acquisition drawings, but we have gotcha. construction drawings. Okay, we'll move on to the limited obligation bond projects, which include Union Station and the Convention Center. Um, Union Station. There are quite a few items within the building that we needed to uncover and figure out what type of restoration needed to be done to it. So the architect has suggested that we do a uh, demolition and grading contract first to get that work done so we can, can decide what needs to be done. That contract is currently on the street. Uh, we will be opening it on the 28th of January, uh, assuming we get enough bidders and, and we had a lot of turnout at the pre-bid meeting. Uh, we will bring that to council in February for your consideration. Um, that, that section we expect to take around four months and the plan is to have the contract in place for the restoration contractor so as soon as this contract is completed they can step in right behind them and begin their work on the full restoration of the building. And is the sense of the demo and grading only uh, as an aspect of actually wanting to make sure that once the actual um, uh, rehabilitation within the building happens that they're addressing what they see and not what we think is there? That's correct. Okay. There, there are quite a few things like some of the terrazzo flooring and things like that were covered up or built over and we don't know what kind of condition it's in. Okay. Uh, the total project budget on that is $18.3 million with total funds committed for the full design of $870,000 which $84,000 of that is committed to NWPs. Mm -hmm. And then the Benton Convention Center renovations. We have bid openings scheduled on the, yes sir. I'm sorry, real quick, can we step real back to the Union Station? Yes. And this is a question. Um, I asked it in the past when we were dealing with this and I'm not sure if we've had any conversation or dialogue up to date and if I need to help facilitate that, I'd be willing to do so. But in ref I was asking in reference to Winston-Salem State's building project directly across the street, if in fact there was opportunity for us, because I know that in particular, Councilman Clark had asked that some, uh, maybe a year or two ago in reference to issues around parking and facility, but some state is building some additional things to meet some of their needs. And the question that I asked in reference to that, was there an opportunity for us to be able to um, see if there was ability to leverage what they were doing um, with their building project? I can investigate that and find out. I, I know there's been some discussions and, and the meeting I was in, they were open to that possibility. I, I, they felt like they had some spaces over there that would be available. And as they're building a parking deck, so. I've, I've noticed that the students are having a hard time hearing us, so let's lean into the mic a little bit. <laughs> so, okay, that, that, okay. it'd just be interesting to see what, because if we get to the type of use that we anticipate using for, um, that would be a, a, a great consideration to, to have. Uh, the Benton Convention Center renovations, um, as I said, we're opening bids on the 20th of January for that. So again, assuming uh, that there are no problems with the bids, we will bring bringing it to council for February. Um, if it's approved in February, the completion date will be May of 2017 on that project. Total project budget of 17.5 million. Uh, Two million of that has been committed so far, with 210,000 of that being to MWBs. That's that's one that's probably more time schedule sensitive than 
most of the others because mm -hmm. of the book of business? It's extremely time yeah. sensitive. Yeah. We, we have actually contracted with a third party to manage the schedule once the con construction starts um, so that we can be on top of it the entire way through the project. Everybody feeling pretty good about the scheduling on it? Yes, if, if we get started <clears throat> when we need to. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Do you have any feel for um, bidders there? We had to re-advertise because we did not get up enough bidders the first time. Okay. Which would have the impact of probably raising our costs. Not yes. as competitive. Yeah. But that one is a, a tricky job because the time frame is yeah. absolutely critical. It is threading a very small needle. And we did restrict, we did put some of that within the, the um, criteria mm -hmm. in terms of those with the form. Yes. Yeah. And what, what we heard from our contractors, it wasn't so much the project itself. Um, they're having trouble finding enough time for their estimators and the, their office workers to put the package together, bid on it, that they just have so much work that they're trying to bid on right now. Okay. I guess that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> Okay, so he's going to throw it back to me. Uh, just very briefly, I did want to share with you a kind of a bond progress report that the city is providing to the community. Uh, back in November, the Citizen Bond Oversight Committee actually suggested that we might want to do something like this. And so, um, as you probably saw in Sunday's paper, we did have a full page, uh, city page, ad to provide the community an update on uh, 33, I think, of the projects that, that we project will be under construction by June. Uh, similar ad will be in the Once It's Home Chronicle on Thursday, and then we'll also have information uh, tomorrow in Yes Weekly and City Beat. Uh, in addition to the print media, we also have our city resources. We've actually designed a bond update page on the city's website that will provide some information about uh, the progress. Also, you know, link uh, users back to the city bond project tracking website that we have. Um, we'll also provide some information in the utility bill insert city line. And then we're still you know, wanting to keep citizens engaged and, and uh, we're opening up the city feedback line uh, so the folks can call in. The number for that is 734-1400. Come in, please. 734-1400. And they can also uh, provide some comments uh, via an online form. Uh, also engaging in a, uh, what we're calling a focused digital ad campaign, so still you know, trying to utilize social media, you know, folks who are interested in biking or greenways, you know, they're on the website, that there may be an advertisement that might pop up that would direct them to uh, give us some information about the, the bond projects or direct them to the city's website, so we are trying to, to reach out in that way. And then finally, we do have a 30-second radio ad that'll, that'll air starting next Monday. Uh, I uh, listened to it this afternoon and kind of the, the little catchphrase is moving earth to make a great city even better. So uh, we're going to do that throughout the, the month of January. Uh, of course, the Citizen Bond Oversight Committee is continuing their work and they should be presenting a, an update with their, with their next quarterly report to you all in the near future. Happy to answer any questions. Inquiries? Comments? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I know you all are staying busy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, general agenda item two, please. Item G2, Greenway Project Acceleration Options Discussion. And I believe this is going to be Mr. Presswood and Mr. Garrity tag team. Yeah. Yes. And um, in absentia, we credit uh, Mr. Turner for the yes. flowchart. <laughs> yes, we did. These, these are his famous flowcharts. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> he managed to get himself a mission trip to dodge our <laughs> we, we did hear that he does have running water. So that was his number one priority on his mission trip was running water. Very good. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, as you probably heard last night with the Greenway discussion, the, the Greenway, typical Greenway planning and design process um, takes us quite a long time, uh, years in fact. And uh, so we've been asked to uh, come up with some ideas of, uh, to hopefully accelerate that process. 
Um, most of the greenways we have in design right now, these won't apply to or, or too far down uh, the road, but this would be for future greenway uh, projects uh, coming up. Uh, first, I wanted to, to touch on, I guess, our the two main things that seem to drive this process taking so long. Um, the first is the funding source that we use for the majority of our, our greenway projects. Uh, we use state funds that come through the MPO. Uh, they supply 80% of the funding, and then the city has to find a 20% uh, match for that. Uh, once we accept those funds, uh, we also accept the fact that we have to follow all of the state's rules, and we also have to submit almost everything to Raleigh for their approval before we can move on to the next step. So as you can guess, that, that adds quite a bit of delay to the process. Oh, do you know whether the sequential mandate for each step uh, derives from federal law or is that the state agency process that's doing that to us? What we found a lot of times it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. um, there are some steps in there that come purely from the state process. Uh, the majority of it though does come from the federal requirements. The, the, the most frustrating thing for folks who haven't you know, been Chart, you know, chugging through this for years. The most frustrating thing is that um, the steps are required to be taken sequentially. You can't combine <laughs> things that in the private sector would logically be prepared simultaneously and, and you know, in, in combination, you know, looking at, at if you had to make a change, you'd, you'd think make, make a change to more than one thing. Um, I, it doesn't make any logical sense. And so it's an artifact of either federal law or state process mandate or both. And we try to get the state to lighten up on some of the staging issues, not to reduce substantive oversight, but to you know, just reduce sheer idiotic red tape. And it's been a frustrating process. So we're looking for ways around that difficulty. The, the second thing that also delays the process is our typical location for greenways. Uh, we typically run it along a stream bank. Um, that provides some advantages. There's, there's usually not anything built there, and it's not land that anybody wants to build on. And then it also allows us to use um, existing uh, bridges for roads that we can pass under instead of having at-grade crossings on those roads. Now, the problem with existing in the floodplain is is we typically um, have an effect on the flood stage there which requires us to apply to FEMA for a conditional letter of map revision which is known as a clomer. FEMA tells you up front when you apply to expect a six to eight month review process. Um, they don't make any bones about it that that's how long it takes and it does. So I uh, wanted to address a few things that we have done trying to speed up the process um, and to address what you talked about. We've tried to find as many places as we can in the process where we can perform, perform parallel work um, while multiple processes are going on. Um, some of what we're doing is beginning the design while we're waiting on the state to approve hiring a uh, consultant for flood studies. Uh, we also will begin the property acquisition process while we have submitted um, final plans to NCDOT for their approval. Uh, we're, we're continually trying to find places where we can do that. Um, we put a emphasis on moving these plans as quickly as possible. Uh, engineering staff is very aware of the time it takes so that when they get any type of approval back, um, they immediately move on uh, to the next process or the next application they have to make. Uh, these projects are tracked by myself by Mr. Turner, by Mr. Garrity, and the chairman of this committee uh, regularly. So uh, we're trying to monitor it as much as possible. Um, Is it a case where you have to ping Raleigh to see if they've finished their work, or do they actually inform you? They typically inform us. Um, it's, it's just usually most things we submit, uh, it's two, three, four week turnaround before it comes back. There, there have historically been cases where paperwork was literally lost on the desk of the railway offices. Yes. <laughs> um, and I, I, I remember one memorable call to the, the Norfolk Southern um, you know, 
vice president, and um, you know he was a very cheerful gentleman. And, and when he was trying to answer my question, he was you know, searching among the stacks on his desk, knocked a stack off the corner of his desk onto the floor, and oh, there it is, <laughs> buried at the bottom of the file of papers. Excuse me, go ahead. It's part of one of the other changes we made is. Um, when we come to council to acquire right away, we're going ahead and getting permission to acquire the right away um, by deed or condemnation so that uh, if we do need to condemn, we don't have to come back a couple months later and get that permission again. Um, and then a couple years ago, uh, we did a overall review and re revision of the Greenway master plan. Um, one of my engineers walked every single one of the proposed greenways because we, we basically wanted to eliminate anything that once we got out there, uh, just proved to be too difficult to build or too expensive to build. So, um, some of the ideas uh, we've looked at, um, and and you'll you'll find a common theme through these is is most of them require money. But uh, the first thing uh, would be to look at maybe some pre-design and permit acquisition acquisition prior to even even uh, requesting funds from the state. Um, that way, the, the project we will be well along uh, before we actually get the funds. Now, again, that would require some kind of greenway fund um, with city money set up to, to pay for that. Is this all any one? I, I, I don't, but I can get it to you if, if you'd like me to. So you're talking about basically creating a land bank? That's correct. Um, this could save us a few weeks, but uh, erosion control, which is one of the permits that we have to, to uh, get before we can move forward, they do offer an ex expedited review fee. Uh, if you pay an extra $120, um, their typical review fee, your review time is 30 days. That $120, we will usually buy you at least two weeks, sometimes three weeks. Money well spent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we'll move on to Mr. Turner's flow charts because um, this gets a little more complicated on uh, how we can speed it up. These require city funding for um, some specialized sections within the process which would eliminate us from having to submit it to Raleigh, get their approval before we can move on. Um, what you see on the first page in front of you is the typical review process when the state is paying for 80% of the project and we're paying for 20. I won't bore you with it if you want to go through it, but you can see how complicated it is and how many approvals we have to get to go through the process. And, and in FYI, this is actually federal money. It comes through the state right. now through the regional metropolitan planning organization, but it originates in Washington. The, the, the state is essentially shut down any contributions from their level uh, to Biking pedestrian right. Now, our, our first suggestion of eliminating some of these steps would be for the city to fund, like I, I addressed earlier, we, we often have to do a flood study and apply for a plumber, um, and we hire specialized engineers to do this work. Um, if we were to fund that work completely with city funds um, and not ask for reimbursement from the state, if you compare page one and page two, the steps in red could be eliminated through the process. Um, we even, when we want to hire a consultant, we have to submit the ad to Raleigh and get approval for the ad before we can even post it to advertise. So, I mean, that's, that's what we're having to go through. How but, much, how much um, do those steps cost? Then? It varies on the, on the complexity. Um, Recently, we've had one around $30,000. That would probably be the minimum. They, they will range up into the 150000 range for, for a more complex project. And how long does it typically add to the review process uh, to go through the multi-state level review? We feel like if we could eliminate through the, this process, we probably could eliminate three to four months within the timeline because there's multiple submittals that have to go to Raleigh. Um, you know, the, the consultant will, once we select one, will give us proposed fees, and we have to send those fees to Raleigh and let them review them. And that's, those months drive up the, the cost of the contract when it's finally bid. Yes. Please go ahead. Sorry. 
So then page three would be the result of eliminating those blocks that were in red. The second proposal would be to use city funds to acquire any needed right of way. Um, again, there's several steps, and if you compare page three and page four, the, those middle red steps would be eliminated from that process. Um, this one, it doesn't, wouldn't cost as much because typically we're only talking 10 to 20,000 worth of property um, and would probably only save us a month or two in the process if we were to uh, start using the map. So then page five would be the result if you did both of those, if the city funded the consultant work and the property acquisition. Now the final suggestion would be the city to fund the entire project. And if you look at page six, everything in red would be eliminated, which then gives you a final result of page seven. And that's actually the wall town connect exactly <laughs> now the wall town connect i was going to use that as, because my, my final suggestion was to consider alternate locations for the greenways um, because even if we're using our own funding we still have to do that flood study if we're in the floodway the wall town connector was a perfect example of it's located all on city property it's not in a floodway um, and we were able to hire an eng a, uh, engineer, we were able to design it, and we were able to get it under contract in less than a year. How many um, of the of the priority, if any, of the priority greenways that have been identified in the plans might be um, approachable in that fashion or outside of floodways, mm -hmm. or largely outside of floodways? I'd say very few of them. Um, one of the, I mean, that, that's a great, concept and my, my, my sense is this is probably one of the few times we can employ it yes. because so many of the of the desired routes are along the creeks um, they're they're more attractive for the users and they have the the secondary benefits of um, uh, of anchoring existing you know, wildlife corridors and, and green strips to help reduce the, the likelihood in the long term that they'll be you know, torn up for development. Other times. That's correct. Yeah, but if you spot another example, <laughs> let us know. Does anybody have any questions? The, the one thing that wasn't included here that I had asked Mr. Turner about um, uh, is the the prospect for uh, time savings in some of the stages where the the state review is likely a pro forma? Um, uh, where can we actually have paperwork done, designs done, and ready to ship back on return mail? In essence, when we get the state approval of of stage one or stage 5B and, and we, we turn around and immediately get them 5C. And in most cases where we are doing that, um, that, that was kind of the, the point of the engineering staff being so aware of how they need to be ready to move on to the next stage. Um, a lot of the things like the, the forms that have to be filled out to submit it are one page form. It, it's an hour work at most to, to have that ready. The main thing is to have the design or whatever stage design um, they're going to be requesting ready to submit. Okay. I, my impression is that that has been done more efficiently the last year or two, um, that there was, there was a time when that work had to be, once a, an approval was received from Raleigh, that work had to be scheduled. Um, and that that was a hold up because it was competing with other work. So you sometimes for a couple hours of work, you might have a month's delay because it got slid to the bottom of the paper file. And we've made it a priority. And it was sort of a broad question, but how often do we have things come back from Raleigh saying that we haven't done, we haven't, our plans are not correct? How often do we get corrected? Typically they have small comments. Uh, 
the majority of time where they have comments is in contract documents and things like that, where they, where they want wording different, right. or that type of thing. Um, a lot of the review is is them just checking up behind us, mm -hmm. and, and we usually have things correct. So if we did it at a, at risk type of development where we did the work and then asked for permission afterwards, we probably would not get dinged. I mean, I know it's not set up that way, but. In theory, we could go ahead and build these things and go ask for permission later and probably be. I, 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 no, I'm not, I'm not they, suggesting that we do that, yes. but I mean, it sounds like the things that were that we would get dinged on would be very small technical well, items. Well, what, what we have found is um, they are audited very regularly, that they are performing like they are supposed to. Um, and we have been told we will not get reimbursed right. if we don't follow the process. Yeah. And particularly when you're talking about construction, there is a, a risk that they will require a substantive change to a, a, a plant. How many times did the bridge over Little Creek get redesigned? Was it five? Yeah, it was quite a few times. And that, that's where it gets a little more involved because multiple departments in Raleigh end up reviewing it. And, and it is, it's now it's a very impressive structure. I think you could drive a tank over <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> over engineer? Yeah. It, it, yes. Not to belabor of such a point from yesterday, but I think I've been four years into my little greenway path. Yeah. Yes. Because we got in there and then they came back and said, no, that's wetlands, you got to move it. And yeah. we came yeah. back, you got to do a study. Yes. And then after the, the neighborhood. The well. Yeah. Right. And after the neighborhood bought in, then, you know, an individual yeah. affected landowner essentially asked us to try to move it back in the wetland. Yeah, so, you know. Been up for you. All right. Okay. Um, can anybody think of anything? I, I ask for this kind of stuff to come forward periodically to, to keep us looking for ways to accelerate the process with this kind of you know, complex project. Yes. I'd say the best thing I heard is to walk the land before you do anything and just see is there anything out that's going to bite us. Right. Yeah. Lord, there's a that creek's not too big wide, it's 20 feet wide, and this, that, and the other. You just try to do the obvious stuff first. Yeah. Yes, um, probably three of the projects that are underway now you know, probably may or may not have ever been entered into the process because of the difficulties. And, you know, the, the last stage of Brushy Four. Uh, because of the railway problem. You you go out there and you look at it, it looks obvious. Hey, big barrel culvert. What's the issue? Uh -huh. um, going through the railway. Uh, the uh, the problem with Little Creek, just to be precisely what you said. Yeah. At one point the creek was X wide and now it's X times. Uh, and then Walltown. Um, all, all of these projects were projected at a certain cost level because of the, <coughs> the problems had not been walked through on the ground before this. Um, uh, an example might have been Peters Creek. You know, a lot of demand for, for that. And it would be a, would be a nice addition, uh, but because staff went down there and said, <laughs> this would be an engineering nightmare. Mm -hmm. you know, it never made the priority cut list, but um, the Salem Creek westward extension was walked, so probably can do that, and it did make the list. So. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, please, uh, anytime somebody gets a great idea, either bring it to us or if you can just do it, do it. <laughs> we will. All right, thank you. Uh, and uh, we have one more item on the uh, scheduled agenda, uh, G3, please. Item G3, information on pedestrian bridge over Church Street. Um, let's see, uh, Mr. Garrity, who will be presenting? Ah, I will. <laughs> Mr. Presswood. <laughs> this is purely an informational item. We wanted to uh, go ahead and let you know we'll be bringing an item to you next month for an encroachment agreement. Uh, Reynolds America would like to build a pedestrian bridge across Church Street. Um, the 400 block of it between 4th and 5th to connect their offices with their parking facility. Uh, they've had some concern with 
employee safety. Um, so we just wanted to let you know about it and take a look at the, uh, the rendering they supplied uh, before we bring the item back to you next month. And as I understand it, they just want the encroachment That's agreement. Correct. They don't want any uh, no. financing. No. Uh, okay, they're going to pay. Very good. And the enc encroachment would be on the, would narrow the width of the sidewalk? No, it's purely, I guess we consider air rights, the fact okay. that it's crossing over our, our street. Okay. Mr. Gamery, this is in your ward, I believe? It is. Any queries? Uh, just in terms of what the, the height of it, is that, that poses no, no issues for, for us in terms of? The, the design would be reviewed by city staff before anything would be approved to be built. Okay. It looks, the, the rent is. It does. Looks spiffy, yeah. Looks like the, uh, arch. <laughs> looks like the double arch is over uh, 52, right? Hmm. Korea Carter? Yeah. Yeah. Do I sense the thing? Um, thank you very much. Is there anything else on any of the items we've looked at thus far? Mr. Presswood. Yes, sir. <clears throat> if I may, sir. Please. On the last item we just reviewed, uh, the bridge design, is there some kind of rule that talks about how they might be able to advertise from the bridges? And I'm seeing over the city from time to time there is advertisement from bridges like these. Talk to me about that. I know we have a signed ordinance. Right. I, I'm not familiar with that. I don't know, Mr. Gary. I know a little about it. <laughs> the, we do have a, a policy for uh, uh, individuals, nonprofits, and other non, um, we, we don't allow profit, for-profit companies, but nonprofits, uh, campaigns for office can do it, where they reserve space on the overpasses that the city owns and maintains. So there are two on University Parkway, and I'm thinking, are there any others? I think just a few, but they're, they're the ones that the city owns and maintains. We allow those banners to go up. We have a calendar. People make reservations. We don't first come, first basis. We charge a a fee basically to cover our costs to put them up. So usually people get in, get, get in line about a year ahead of time for those. But this one would not, we would not own this one. So no. we wouldn't have any say on what actually goes on the bridge. I don't think it would we possibly would, be problematic. I don't think the sign or, well, we'd have to check. I'm not sure if this sign ordinance would let, I don't know. I just, we'd have to find out if, it, if you could put a temporary banner up on. A, well, that, that's a good question. We could, um, uh, we could condition an encroachment agreement on um, on approval. Yes, we could. Sorry. We'll find out. Please do. Thank you. I, I hadn't thought about that because you know it's it's attractive as it is, but it would be much less so if it is uh, have another building. Yeah, well, yeah, got camel on there or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say if we allow them on our bridge, I think we should allow them on their bridge. They should be comparable policies. I'm not sure we should allow them on our bridge, but that policy was. Adopted before I. But it, that's not weird to debate. Good question. All right. Anything? Any other items for uh, discussion today? Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we are adjourned.